tired of relying on clunky file transfer tools or expensive cloud services? Let's discover SFTP Go, a powerful free open source SFTP server packed with features to simplify secure file transfers. More advanced than a classical FTP server, it supports local storage as well as S3 compatible storage and Google Cloud. With fine-grained roles and permissions, you can control exactly who accesses your file and how they interact with them, ensuring maximum security and flexibility for any workflow. It also has nice additional features such as virtual folders and events. But before exploring SFTP Go, let's see the different options to start using it. You can use one of their SaaS versions starting at around $50 a month for 25GB. If you prefer to deploy it on your server, you can self-host it by following one of their installation guides, or you can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy the self-hosted version on your server or the cloud provider of your choice, while we take care of the installation, backups, updates, and maintenance for you. To start using SFTP Go on our platform, head to ls.io and click on Login. Then deploy my first service, search for SFTP Go, then select Choose between the different cloud providers, region and service plans based on your need. Then press the next button. Adjust the final setting, level of support and hit create service. Once the installation is ready, you will receive this email. Follow the click here to get the password link. You arrive on LSTO administration dashboard for your SFTP Go instance. Copy the password to your clipboard with this button here and access your instance by following the admin UI link. Enter the username, this is for the administration account, so the default one is root and the password, you paste it from your clipboard, then sign in. Okay, so currently what we see is the web admin panel. This is where we can configure our SFTP Go instance. So the first thing we need to do is to create users. Let's create our first one. You have to create the username, I will name it John type a password, and because you are typing the password, it's best to check the required password change so you don't know the passwords of your users. But for this platform overview, it's not a big issue. So we'll keep it unchecked. What we can do next is to assign public keys, certificates, and some permission on the file system the user has access to. So remember, SFTP Go is not only an FTP. It's a real storage solution compatible with a lot of tools. So if you go to storage, local disk will be an FTP server where you can store data. But then you have a lot of different options, either an encrypted local disk, S3 compatible, so Amazon S3, which is a paid service, but you could use Cloudflare R2 or the free open source Minio. It's even compatible with Google Cloud Storage or Azure. We will keep local disk for this video. We can define a path on our instance where this user will have access to it. We can keep it empty and by default, what will be for this user will be only accessible for this user. Then we can limit the download speed and the upload speed. And we have a bunch of additional features for more control. For example, we are in the add mode, so we want it to be active, but we could deactivate a user without del deleting the user. We could say, okay, we create a user for one month for one specific purpose. And then after a certain date, it will be deactivated. You can assign a user email and you can define the password strength. So it will force the user to put a strong password, avoiding security leaks. Then you can define ACL. This is access control list, which means for a specific folder, you can add some rights. It can be per directory permission. So what you allow this user to do, list, download, upload, override, create directories, and so on. It can also be based on shell patterns. So you can give access only to specific files. For example, only PNG or zip. Or you can give access to only specific dates. For example, you want to give access at a specific time. You would select the date, the start and end date, and only during that period, upload or listing will be allowed. And so on, you have a lot of control. You can limit the amount of gigabyte, the upload size, the bandwidth, everything is configurable per user. But we will see later that it also works for groups. Let's save our newly created user. And in a new tab, we will open the client version because currently it's the admin. So let's open the same link, but we just remove 
slash admin. So now we are trying to access web client. We enter our username. Remember it's John and our password. Remember, I didn't share it with you. Then sign in. And we have that good looking file storage interface. We can create folders or upload files. Let's upload my first file. You can drag and drop or click to upload. I'm uploading LSTO logo. Hit the save button. And now you have the listing of those files. So remember, currently it's uploading on SFTP Go, on the local server. But if we chose S3, we would have the same interface. And if you know S3, it doesn't have a good looking interface to add, upload different files. So it can be used as a web UI to access S3 storage. Let's continue. I will create a folder. Let's name it test1 and validate. We can enter inside and the same apply. I can open, choose a file, upload it, save it. It's a classical UI to handle files. But my home, home directory is unique for this account. Let's go back to the admin and I will create another account. We have John, I will create Jane. Another password, I will skip the settings except for the root directory. I could use anything, slash demo, then save. Now in the listing of our users, we have two users. If I go to John, edit, you can see that automatically it created a root directory. That's why John only has access to its data. While if I go back to the list of users, we go to Jane, the root directory is demo. I will connect with the second account here in the incognito tab, so I won't be logged on the same account. Then type the username and the password and sign in. We have the same interface, but it's empty because the data is unique for every user. What if we want both of these users have access to shared content? Let's go back to the admin. And the feature that interests us is virtual folders. Well, we could in user use the same path, but it's better and for better control to use virtual folder. So what they are, click on add and it creates a virtual folder to give you access to one file system. So let's name it resources. And like we did for one user, we can do the same here for the storage to choose between local disk, S3 and so on. So if you create multiple virtual folder, for one user, you could have access to a local SFTP or to S3 and Google Cloud in the same place. We will keep a local disk. We will put it in a folder named slash resources and save. Now we have two options to assign it to a user. Either we go to the user, we select it, we edit, you scroll down until you find the virtual folders and you assign it. But you don't want, in most of the cases, do it user by user. So instead we will use groups. Let's create a group. Let's name it LSTO team. You can add a description. It can also have access to a specific file system without even creating the virtual folders. But let's mount our virtual folder. So people in this group will have access to the virtual folder we created. Let's say for the name, so it will be different. Our folder is named resources, but maybe we can name it slash images. The name isn't important here. We have all the settings that we had for the users and click on save. Now we need to assign our users to our group. So best is first to create the group and then the users. Edit, scroll down to groups and we assign our LSTO team. You see that you can assign secondary group and membership groups. Let's save. Now if I reload on the right, Jane account has access to images, but John isn't in the group yet. So let's edit it too. Scroll down to groups, LSTO team, save, switch to the right tab and reload. Now both of our users have access to this folder named images. That in fact is the resources folder of our SFTP Go. Let's upload anything and both of your users will have access to this image. If you need to share content and you don't want to create access for someone on the web client, you can just click the three dots and share. Let's name it tests. You give the path that will have that you want people to have access to. You can add a password, expiration date, 
save it, then you can have a link to it, either to download the content, to access to the directory, or to download the files. Let's select single directory. And this is what a non-logged user will have access to. So you can see we don't have the menu, but we have access to the different files. And on the web client, you can also add additional security by using an authenticator app to connect to your account. Now, one very useful feature is the event manager. So what it is, is when you will perform action on SFTP Go, it will trigger events. You will be notified by what happened and you can create some logic around it. So first we need to create an action. Let's click on add. We can name it webhook notification type HTTP. We can use webhook.site to be notified of webhook without developing a backend. Let's copy the URL. So now it's waiting for its first request. So let's paste the URL of our webhook. We can add additional settings. We just want to show that we can be notified on a webhook. Let's save. We have our action ready. What we need is a rule to trigger our action. Click on add. We can name it notification upload. It's active. And what will trigger this event? It can be different things, but we will use one of the file system events. And the one will be on upload. You see, you have the choice between a lot of different things. Download, delete, which protocol or filters you are looking for, what pattern of file names, but we'll keep it empty and save. But I forgot to add at least one action. So where is it? Here, actions. It will trigger webhook notification. You can choose to stop on failure, but we can just keep the default and save. Let's go back to our client. On the right, the webhook is waiting. So click upload file. Let's upload something. I will choose this resource, save. And you can see immediately it triggered my webhook. Very useful if you build product that require a file upload. For more security, you can use the IP manager feature, answering you that the users are connecting from the expected IP, for example, your office. And because SFTP Go is an FTP server, you are not forced to use the web client. With the credentials we created for users, we can copy the URL. Then in any FTP client, for my example, I will use FileZilla, you enter the host, your username, let's say John, the password, and you can try to connect. And you can see we have access to our files that we created from the web client directly in FileZilla. As always, I recommend you to have a look at the documentation for features that I didn't cover in this video. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering SFTP Go with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, watch this video available here.